Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. So today's video is long overdue. I've been meaning to do this for ages and I've had lots of requests for it, but the opportunity is here and I'm now gonna be talking about the tank transfer method in order to quarantine fish for the purposes of ick or cryptocarriums, irritants or common white spot. So a fair while ago I did a video on why we quarantine fish and talked about the concepts and the most basic um, methods of doing it and in that I said I'd do a follow-up for tank transfer method which is one of the most popular ways to quarantine fish specifically for white spot. Right now I'm in the middle of tank transfer method quarantining a bunch of new fish for my tank. I've got a purple tang and a flash arras currently in day 12 out of the 14 days of the tank transfer method. Now for those of you that don't know what tank transfer method is, it's the process whereby you place new fish that you want to quarantine into a completely separate setup and that can be something really simple like a plastic tub on the floor and you keep them in that setup for three days or 72 hours. After 72 hours you scoop the fish out either with a colander or a net and you place them into another identical setup and repeat the process. For 72 hours or three days, they'll now live in that setup. Now in that next 72 hours or, or, or three days, what you do with your original setup is you tear it down, you pour the water down the sink and you dry it out completely. You can sterilize it with bleach uh, as long as you then rinse it very thoroughly afterwards. But the idea is to get the setup to be 100% dry. This sterilizes the setup and kills any uh, disease such as crypto carrier irritants or ick or white spot uh, and makes that setup ready again for the next transfer. You repeat this process every three days for four transfers with the fifth transfer on the uh, 14th day being generally into your display tank or for some people into a more permanent quarantine setup where they might observe the fish for a further 30 days or something like that. But that's outside the scope of this video, we're just going to focus on tank transfer for this video. So the reason why you do this, why do you transfer the fish between setups uh, into entirely brand new water every three days, four times over, uh, over 14 days? Well, the reason you do this is it outruns the life cycle of cryptocarrion irritants. This parasite, in its life cycle, it attaches to the fish for a period of time. Uh, when it's attached to the fish, that's when it often exhibits the visible symptoms that we sometimes see, or the white spots. These symptoms are not always visible. Many fish can carry and have cryptocarrion irritants and exhibit no symptoms. The reason for this is its preferred location on the fish is not the body of the fish where it might be visible to us, but actually in the fish's gills, and you would never be able to see that. Now the good news is the parasite only lives on the fish for a short period of time in its natural life cycle, and after which it will drop off the fish. It then goes into another phase of its life cycle where it forms a cyst, uh, and that cyst would attach to a surface such as rock or the glass or in this case a plastic tub, the walls of a plastic tub. So we take advantage of this short life cycle on the fish to remove the fish from the environment where these cysts are uh, developing before they have a chance to hatch with many many new, uh, I believe they're called torments or the baby ick parasites, let's call them that, which are free swimming in the water and would attach themselves to the fish. So every three days, we're moving the fish to a new sterile setup, then to another new sterile setup, and then to another new sterile setup. The reason we do this over the, co over, over the course of uh, four transfers is because uh, it's well documented and scientifically known that the maximum amount of time that the parasite can live on the fish is well inside that 12 out, that 14 day window. And in fact, the, the last transfer is essentially, strictly speaking, redundant in that uh, there should be no parasites left on the fish at that point, 
we just do it as a redundancy just in case uh, and to be extra safe or in case one of the early transfers was not completely effective and some parasites transferred over, the free swimming tra parasites transferred over and attaches the fish, we then have time in that fourth transfer for them to drop off before we then move them away again um, from any chance of further exposure into a new cell. Now this method is extremely effective. It's also very low stress on the fish as there's no medicines, no chemicals or no uh, drug treatments being used on the fish. Um, the common ones being copper or chloroquine, or chloroquine phosphate, which, is, which can be very harsh on the fish. And there are certain fish which have very low tolerance for these treatments as well, meaning that tank transfer method is the only method for treating these fish. Another reason why I like it so much is that it's quite rapid. You get it done and over with in 14 days. Now I should also note what tank transfer method does not treat. And the answer to that is everything except cryptocarrion irritants. It only treats ick, white spot. If you suspect your fish may have something else or you know your fish has something else, tank transfer method won't help you. I've personally done tank transfer method on all of the fish that I've ever owned since I started the hobby and I've had a 100% success rate and survival rate through the process. So I'm very confident that it's low stress on the fish and it's very safe. A common question that always gets asked about tank transfer method is how do you prevent the buildup of ammonia? How do you cycle these tanks that are only being used for three days? And the answer is you don't cycle them and preventing the buildup of ammonia could not be any simpler. All you need is a little bottle of something like this, Seachem Prime being the most common, but any water conditioner that neutralizes ammonia, and you put a few drops of this in your tank morning and night, and for the three days, there will be no dangerous ammonia for the, for the fish. And then you're transferring them into a brand new setup and you start again. This is all it takes, is a couple of drops of Seachem Prime, and ammonia is simply not an issue. Another really common question is, I don't have four or two or even one extra tank available to do tank transfer methods, so it all sounds too hard. Well, it doesn't need to be that hard. All you actually need is some plastic storage tubs of at least 20 to 25 liters. I'm sure you've already got a bunch of these lying around your house. You're probably using them to store junk, probably fish junk under the stairs or in the garage or something like that. Crack one of those out, fill it with salt water, put the most basic heater and the most basic water movement device of your choosing, whether that's a pump, a wave maker, or even some air stones, and you're good to go. I would also recommend putting a lid on it, but not airtight, just in case the fish decide to jump, but also to help prevent any spray, particularly if you're using an air stone, um, and aerosolizing that water that's in the uh, quarantine tank. Whilst the chances are extremely low, it is a minute possibility that a micro droplet of water that's aerosolized could contain the ick parasite and could find its way into your display tank. So for that reason, many people also advocate for tank transfer method quarantine being done in a separate room to your display tank, or at least as far away as possible. If you're using any tools like nets or tongs or even your own hands when working on the quarantine tank, do not, I repeat, do not go anywhere near your display tank with those tools or those hands until they have been cleaned thoroughly and dried. Uh, many people, again, will have separate tools for their quarantine tanks as opposed to their display tanks. It's not strictly necessary, but you do need to be careful to prevent cross-contamination. I'm confident that anybody can set up a perfectly adequate quarantine setup for less than $50, probably less than $25 if they really want to try hard and uh, they're a little bit thrifty. Again, all you need is something as simple as a plastic tub, a cheap heater, and something to move water to keep it aerated. That's it. And you can find all of this stuff on eBay. I rotate between two setups, but many people will rotate between four setups so they don't need to worry about cleaning and sterilizing the first setup in preparations for the third transfer and then the second setup in preparations for the fourth transfer. Um, and personally, what I use on my two setups 
are a hang on back filter and a cheap heater in one and a uh, cheap wave maker and um, an old heater in the other. You could also use a $15 pond pump with a length of hose to prevent it shooting straight up and make it instead shoot around the tank in a circular motion. Uh, you could use air stones, just make sure you don't reuse those air stones themselves between setups, you need to throw them out afterwards. Literally anything that moves water to keep the, the tank well uh, oxygenated and aerated. I've personally taken fish like blue tanks that are riddled with visible ick and in a really bad state and I've run them through a 14 day course of tank transfer method and they come out the other side 100% ick free and far more healthy than when they entered and I, you, you can have complete confidence that that fish has been cured of ick and is able to go in your display tank afterwards. It really is as close to a magic cure as you can get for this terrible parasite and really is something that anyone can do. You just simply plot out on your calendar a time every 72 hours for the next 14 days to do the transfers and get through. Um, you know, it only really needs to be about 100 litres of water if you're using 25 litre tubs like I am. And you can easily transfer two or three fish, as long as they're not too big, um, through a single round of tank transfer. If you're using larger tubs, obviously you can handle a lot more fish, or smaller tubs, you might need to be a bit more conservative with the number of fish you go through TTM um, together, but you know, common sense can prevail there. Again, if in doubt about the tolerance for ammonia levels in these small tanks over the three days, CKM Prime is your friend. A few drops of that will neutralize any ammonia and make the water safe for the fish. Now, while tank transfer method won't cure any other diseases other than ick, it still is a really great tool as part of your quarantine arsenal because it can allow you the time to identify any other diseases through that time. For example, if you have a hard time picking the difference between velvet and ick, it will become very apparent during TTM that it's not working. Uh, additionally, if you are observing the fish closely, in the time of the TTM treatment, you might observe other things like flukes or brucanella, particularly on clownfish, um, or bacterial infections. And if you notice those things, you can continue the TTM treatment, but of course add additional medications or anything else required for those other treatments or for those other diseases as part of the process. And once they complete TTM, put them into a more permanent quarantine housing and then continue treating for uh, those other diseases. Again, I really strongly advocate TTM. It's the best way, in my opinion, to quarantine fish and to keep your display tank 100% ick free, like mine is. It can be done. It's a total myth that all tanks have ick. It's a total myth that it's impossible to treat and keep it away. It's also really safe and uh, in my experience, um, very low stress on the fish. So if you've got any questions about tank transfer method, please post them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. I really encourage everyone to be informed, learn about the life cycle of cryptocarrion irritants and do what's best for your fish for their long-term health uh, and the eradication of this awful parasite. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, um, particularly with novice or new members of the hobby. I think proper education on this topic is really, really important for everyone entering the reefing scene. And the quicker we can eradicate ick from the hobby, as well as all the fallacies and myths that go along with it, like things like garlic and et cetera, et cetera, all that rubbish, the better. So please share this with new reefers. Get the message out there. Tank transfer method is easy, it's cheap, it's safe, and it's effective. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.